Tinkle, tinkle, y'all. Happy Festivus, everybody. Hope you're having just an awesome holiday season. I've uh, just gone on vacation. I've been working like a madman for a while, as it sort of just happens in the Christmas season. Taking a few bumps and bruises at my job, but that's always fun. But life is good, and I've read some awesome comments this week, and I wanted to share them with you guys. Uh, I'm a little disheveled right now. i got a, my family coming over. It's my wife's birthday. It's pretty hectic around here these days, so everyone's napping, so I figured I'm going to take this time for you guys. My five minutes in peace I'm giving to you. Let's talk about some comics. So this is uh, like a week old. This is Justice League number 36. Um, I picked this one up from my store because I sort of thought the Lego idea was kind of cool. But I didn't want to get every Lego variant. This one kind of had a bit of everybody. So I thought, okay, that's the one I'll grab. A little bit of a crunch because it's $3.99. Um, and I don't really read Justice League. But I really enjoyed this book, and I actually might add it to my pull list after reading this issue. Basically what happened is, um, I think it's New York City they're in, or Metropolis, sort of has been infected with this uh, disease that was stolen from Lex Luthor's lab uh, as he was tried to be killed, and everyone sort of got this sort of zombie disease that gives them superpowers, but ultimately it kills them as well. So you have these people running around uh, with incredible superpowers, causing problems to the Justice League who's trying to contain everything and Robin Banks and stuff like that. So, pretty cool concept. Uh, it's kind of funny because Batman's looking for... Batman and Superman in this are looking for Subject Zero, which was like the first person who got infected and having a trouble, tough time finding him. And Batman's doing exactly the same thing in Endgame right now. So, all he does these days is look for Patient Zero. But they find him at the end. He's sort of full beast mode. So... Uh, a lot of fun, good to read. Uh, art's great. Jeff Johns is a great writer. I'm really starting to discover how awesome he is. I've just read a little bit of Jeff Johns in the past, and I think I'm going to add this to my pull list. So these variant covers, they work for me, I guess. I'm sucker. Batman and Robin 37. Holy shit. The epic conclusion to the uh, uh, apocalypse raid for Damien's body. Sweet beatdown fight with Batman and uh, Darkseid. Really awesome fight. Love this suit that Batman has and the stuff that uh, Tomasi and Gleason have it do and how it sort of works. Uh, just awesome. And uh, surprisingly concludes uh, with what you know is coming ultimately and the return of Damien. But in the sort of preview at the end, you see that he's coming back uh, changed in a certain way. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. I liked Damien how he was. I liked what he was working through. But I guess if you're going to bring him up back, you have to have some sort of ramifications of that. So uh, he's coming back. He's somewhat changed. Not just evil or anything like that, but uh, looks like he's powered up somehow. So interesting to see where Tomas is going to keep taking this. I'm glad he's still on it. Like 37 issues. I think he's done the whole run. That's pretty incredible. And uh, this series has been great from beginning to start. Beginning to start. Beginning to end. Uh, so loving it guys, pick it up. And it's still a $2.99 book. That's what DC's doing that I really appreciate. Marvel's just going $3.99 every, with every book. They're saying like, pay up, you like these characters, pay for them. But I don't think it should go like that. If you are going to have $3.99 books, have them for your marquee books. Have them for like the Justice League books with Jeff Johns, you're a really awesome writer and Batman with Scott Snyder and you're like a team like I get it those guys are like serious talent you gotta pay him a little more money uh not to sell Tomasi short he's killing it these days and maybe this book should get a uh, bump up to $3.99 I'd still pick it up but uh Marvel just has so many of these mediocre books for four dollars and I don't even want to try it like Iron Fist I was liking but I didn't want to spend four bucks a month for it. it just wasn't good enough to keep it uh, it's a lot of money on your bill every week if uh, when you start adding all those books. So I don't even have any Marvel books this weekend, which is amazing for me because I'm a really big Marvel guy, way more than DC. I got some image here. I got Manifest Destiny. What have we got? Seven? Twelve. Oh, man, I'm way off. Uh, number 12. Uh, they're finally away from that dumb frog. Uh, continuing on some great interesting backstory about uh, sort of how they started this whole venture, where they came from. More things about uh, Lewis and Clark themselves, uh, where they were at before they came, and sort of what prompted them to come on this dangerous journey. 
we meet some more natives and get a little hints to what's coming. Uh, apparently those arcs, you know how the boat got caught in the ark and the giant frog was there? Those might be some kind of portal. They were kind of warning them like, oh, there's that we, we had discovered an arc before and there's a horrible monster that was there and killed a bunch of guys. And sort of building on that storyline. So this continues to be solid and fun. Uh, great adventure story. Sort of more of an information filler episode. Not a ton of action, but still really good. Definitely worth reading, guys. Manifest Destiny. Get it in trade and start picking up singles if you haven't got it because it's awesome. This is Batman number 37. Yeah. Uh, I got this variant. I was with my son. There's two variants. This is kind of the villain variant. Uh, it's okay. Kind of neat. Looks kind of like the animated series style almost. This is good. He's still looking for Subject Zero in this, trying to figure out the source of uh, this Joker zombie disease that's taking over everybody, turning them to laughing crazy zombie people. Um, I'll, hold it. I'll hold it this way. Yeah, I don't know. It's sort of your standard somewhat story. It seems like uh, there's a serious sense of dread with this zombie disease as they don't they just can't find a cure for it. Even though Batman's been able to cure all the other ones, this one has some super special formula uh, which they can't figure out what it is. And you know, a long way back in Batman, there's an interesting time where where Bruce is sitting at like the Bat computer and he's breaking down the whole formula that created the Joker. And he was just saying, you take all these elements, it shouldn't have done what it did. There's like some missing link element in there. And I don't know what it is or what it, or why it was there, but it, it's what caused that transformation. So I think it's somewhat implying that it's something inside the Joker himself. He is sort of the source of a lot of this evil and stuff. It's not just that chemicals that he fell into. Oh, and there's also like a really intriguing sort of thing where... Uh, they're looking through old newspapers and stuff, and you see clips of the Joker uh, or Joker-like characters within uh, horrible events throughout Gotham's history. So he's sort of there along. So they're building up sort of the, the dark legend that is the Joker and how he's always been there and there shouldn't be laughter in Gotham and stuff. So yeah, I'm liking where it's going. I, I really like I never have had a problem with Snyder's run on this. A lot of people, I think, somewhat forget how good they got it with Snyder. Like, he's not going to be perfect all the time. And DC gets their fingers in there and makes him do things like the Zero Year and stuff. But he rolls with it. And I, I think for the most part, he's really solid. So, uh, yeah, Endgame continues to be good. And then I picked up this one, Rumble number one. I'd seen this image on, like, Twitter or something a long time ago and been like, okay, I see that. And that's something that sort of intrigues me. Makes me want to take a look at what this story is about. Did I enjoy it? Uh, yeah, I'll give it an okay, like a high-pitched, yeah, you know, that's, it's good, but it's not amazing. It sets up, it's sort of like a mystery. There's this sort of, this crazy guy who's living in an alley or whatever shows up and is trying to, like, kill this guy. We have no idea why, what's going on. He cuts off his arm, uh, he gets his head sort of smashed in, and he turns into, like, a scarecrow, like a pile of draw dust and disappears. And then these other demons show up, and they're kind of, they want to get his sword, and so there's a not a really a, there's a lot of questions being thrown around, a lot of mystery. It's sort of that style. She doesn't really set up where the book's going to go or what it's really about. Uh, it just sort of introduces uh, the couple characters and starts moving forward. Uh, yeah, I liked it. I'll probably get a couple more, see how it goes. But it wasn't the greatest number one issue, but we'll see. So uh, art was really good, and I enjoyed the art. Uh, sort of cartoony style, but really fleshed out. Looks good. Not so sketchy. Some of these uh, indie books, I find the artist is really sketchy looking. Uh, no, it's, so it was solid. And I'll just quickly do a review for this. I finally finished uh, The Black Mirror, which is really good. I really liked it. This is uh, the story that put Scott Snyder on the map. And this was um, a Dick Grayson Batman story. So when he was taken over because Batman got sent back in time or whatever, uh, this story came out and really solid. Great to see like a different got character. Like I love Bruce Wayne. I love the brooding Batman. But it's really interesting to see a like the the polar opposite sort of lighthearted take on it and how um, Dick Grayson has to deal with a lot of the heavy duty stuff that Batman has to deal with, and he himself sort of gets a little bit more uh, brooding as it goes on and serious. So. Uh, really great story. Uh, interesting things happen. Wonderful, like mystery, uh, sort of a who done it, trying to figure out, uh, put the who did what and who's really behind all the horrible things that are happening. I don't want to give too much away, but if you haven't read it, 
definitely worth checking out. Uh, Jock on Art, who's really good at doing that sort of creepy, dark, uh, gritty style. And it fits the tone of the story so well. Uh, there's giant killer whales. If you guys are into that, if you really like killer whales, that's like your, your spirit guide animal. It's in here as well. I definitely recommend this one. And that's going to be it for this week, guys. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Hope, thank you guys so much for, if you're watching uh, my trade, my collection videos, a lot of really nice comments on there, guys being really nice. Uh, so I appreciate that, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you later.